Okay, so here we are back again uh, on air live at YouTube with uh, JNPion 2020, the very, very special and hopefully unique online edition of the International Joomla Conference. Um, in theory, I'm not here right now uh, in that uh, office in Cologne, Germany, but I'm in sunny Lisbon, uh, hanging out with a bunch of amazing Juma folks uh, at the bar, probably with a beer. Um, but uh, then coronavirus uh, kicked in, and now uh, I have to hang out in my office uh, with a beer. Um, and also a bunch of amazing Juma folks, um, but uh, I can absolutely guarantee you that I miss all the other ones uh, who are watching right now in the stream. Um, if uh, you feel exactly the same and think that uh, the world should participate in those feelings, uh, feel free, free to tweet the shit out of this uh, and uh, don't forget to use the JEP20 hashtag. Um, and uh, you can, uh, well, the one thing that we would love to see is you tweeting a selfie uh, of yourself while you're watching the stream. Our, our idea is to make some sort of credit video thingy sharing slideshow thing uh, where we are going to show all your pictures uh, so you can get an idea of how many amazing people are watching this right now. Um, before we jump into uh, Tim's presentation, let me please thank our sponsor Plesk for supporting us and uh, another shameless plug for those who just joined us um, because we had to cancel the in-person event uh, and uh, the uh, rather big cancellation fee associated with that cancellation, um, our, uh, our JEP association um, is looking uh, for uh, a buck or two. Uh, so uh, if you want to support us and uh, want to help us making an in-person event possible next year, feel free to hit jbeyond.org. There's a rather big and massive donation button right on the front page. Click on it. Um, we would really appreciate your help. So, and uh, with that, I'm now uh, handing over to Tim, um, who's going uh, to tell us how to help people who need help with Joomla, um, which I'm really curious about because that's pretty much 50% of my day job. I'm looking forward to all the amazing sauce that I'm now going to learn. Tim, the stage is yours. Okay, thanks, David. And uh, hello, hey there, Joomla fans. Tim Davis here. I'm a Joomla fan too. Uh, greetings to you from the left coast of Canada. It's 10 o'clock in the morning where I am here in Victoria on beautiful, uh, uh, Vancouver Island, which is on the west coast, is not Vancouver. It's the island that's just uh, uh, it's about an hour and a half ferry way, uh, ferry ride away from Vancouver. Uh, but it's uh, kind of a gray, overcast day here. But I'm already enjoying this uh, because usually uh, when I'm doing a live stream, I have to set up all the gear and everything and have a per person lined up and control everything. And I realized just as this was starting, I get to just talk today. And everybody else is taking care of that. So it's a, uh, that's that's wonderful. I also have chat off to the side here. So I see people, hi, Soren and uh, Daniel and Dorothy. And early up there, I saw Bjorn. I, I won't be interacting with the comments too much while I'm talking, but uh, certainly put your questions in there and we can, I'll see what I can do. Uh, so uh, for those of you who don't know me, you already know my name is Tim Davis. I am um, here in Victoria. I'm almost 55 years old. I've been married for 34 years. My wife, Susan, and I have three kids. Each of those kids is married. And so all together, we have four grandkids. And uh, I mentioned that just so that you can know me the person and also explain that uh, I need to take these glasses off and put on my grandpa glasses so I can see uh, my notes on the screen there. And for those of you that have watched my YouTube channel and my Juma tutorials, you'll laugh because, you know, sometimes those glasses come on and off quite a bit. Uh, so I started using Joomla when it was Mambo, and I basically came to Mambo, uh, and then of course Joomla, uh, as a refugee from Dreamweaver, uh, because um, I, all my websites were really boxy and square, and uh, I was all using tables, and I thought, well, how do, how do people make these nice websites that I see? And then I had a hosting account uh, at that time in Florida, and uh, they had this thing in the control panel for the hosting called Fantastical. And it was all this one-click install uh, uh, software. So I started just looking to see what there was to use for free. And when I came across Mambo, which, of course, now, like I said, is Joomla, uh, 
I, I thought, oh, it just made sense to me. And when I saw the template system, I thought, that's that's how they're making those nice looking sites. So that's I converted my stuff over to Mambo and and haven't looked back since then. Now I'm not a programmer. In fact, the only programming training that I have was a, a computer programming course in basic when I was in grade nine in high school. So that was 1979. I learned on a Commodore, uh, a Commodore PET um, a computer, and we saved our programs to tape cassettes, the same tape cassettes that you would listen to music on. You would save your programs to them. You would uh, rewind to the beginning, save the program, and when it stopped, you'd write down the counter so you could put another program after it. And to load those programs, it was back and forth on the counter trying to find them. Uh, in fact, while I was taking that course, they came in with this newfangled thing, a five and a quarter inch floppy disk. And only the kids from rich families in my class could afford those discs. The rest of us had to stick with tape cassettes. And I actually was using a used tape cassette. But that's all the programming formally that I have. So I, I understood a little bit of the basics, but then from there, really nothing, nothing else. So when I came to uh, start making web pages in the mid 90s and then uh, ended up doing things in, in Joomla, I uh, didn't, I, I came to it as someone who needed help. And I am still someone who needs help from that perspective, especially in advanced things or code things or, um, you know, I mean, I, I don't know where to put a semi, it's not like English. In English, I throw an extra punctuation every now and then just in case it makes sense while I'm writing. Uh, in, in programming, it, you know, it doesn't work that way. And so one of the things that I found was is that as I was reading documentation uh, for different uh, products in Joomla or different help forums, there was, there was key terms and things that I just didn't understand. And sometimes it would take me a couple of hours to decipher or understand what the solution was to whatever problem I was having. And so what I started doing was once I figured it out, I thought, well, I'm going to make a I'm going to make a YouTube video showing just a quick, simple step for doing this. And so uh, down through the years, that channel has grown. Uh, it's, it's about six and a half years old now. And um, and so I, I that's why I thought that today's topic on how to help people who need help with Joomla would be a good one, because uh, there's a lot of people out there, even as David said, that's half of the work that he does uh, who who need help and uh, frequently need help like I do. So uh, today I wanna to talk about some of my observations and philosophies and principles about how I try to help others and not necessarily the tools, although I'm certainly happy to connect with anyone who talk, wants to talk about YouTube or streaming or, or anything like that. I thought that first of all, though, I'd answer, that's a good question to answer is why help people in the first place? And it sounds kind of a it sounds kind of a a, a little ridiculous to ask that. Um, it also sounds a little bit psychopathic as well. Someone comes up, well, why help people? But uh, you know, the helping others is really important for our community. So we are a community, and helping people is key to the intake process of how we grow and are healthy. If people uh, discover Joomla and are are working on it and looking for a solution. Um, they're going to need help as, as we all do at different stages where we are. And if the help is not there, if we don't help them or help them in an effective way, they're just gonna go off somewhere else. A lot of times we see people in the Facebook group who have uh, gotten a job and their boss has said, oh, you're responsible for the website. It's done in, um, it's done in Joomla and uh, they get in there and the next thing you know, they're in Facebook saying, how do I do this? How do I change a title? How do I do these basic things? Those are people near the community, and we want to uh, we want to incorporate them and bring them in, so that as they um, as they learn learn and participate, they can contribute. Also, the other thing too is that if you're making your living or some of your living off of Joomla or making some side money, um, being a, you know helping others is going to give them a better experience and they're going to uh, have some loyalty towards you and they're going to keep coming back to you with repeat business because the next thing that they need help with or they're looking for if they know that you are helpful you're the person that they're going to come to uh the other thing too is that uh helping 
And I uh, would argue being helped is a key human connection that brings satisfaction to our very self. And I'm going to talk more about that later. Uh, but first, I want to uh, let's talk about some of my observations, tips, principles, philosophies. One of the things that I've noticed and that I really try to remember when I'm trying to help other people is that everything is obvious to the person who knows how to do something, right? So say, I'll say that again. Everything is obvious to the person who knows how to do something. So that's what I said. One of the main motivators behind my YouTube channel was to help others learn things after I had received help or I would finally figured out on my own how to do something in Joomla. Uh, because the things that were missing there, as I said, I, I could explain it to someone else in terms of someone who didn't know, um, who didn't know what was obvious to someone else. Now, having said that, once I figure something out, there's probably some things that are obvious to me because I know how to do them that might be not obvious, that might not be obvious to other people. So when you're going to help, when you're going to help someone, it's really key to uh, be paying attention to what you're telling them and watch out for terms or concepts or ideas that maybe they're not uh, aware with, uh, aware of. And you know, sometimes we're afraid of sounding like condescending to someone by asking them every little bit, "Oh, do you know how to do this?" or "Oh, do you know what that means?" Uh, but what I try to do with people is just say, okay, I'm not sure all what you know, so I'm just going to ask questions. If it's something you already know, don't be offended. Uh, it's, it's just I just want to make sure you get the most out of this. And people will be pretty responsive to that. Now, not every post or extension documentation can cover everything right back to when the internet was invented. So I'm not saying that every time we try to help someone, we have to explain everything right back to the beginning. Uh, but... Uh, be mindful of what might not be obvious to them. Now, I'm going to tell you a funny uh, thing. Uh, I was married and had children before I realized that pickles were actually cucumbers. <laughs> now, I don't like, uh, you know, I, I didn't eat cucumbers. I did not like pickles. I never sat there one day and thought, hey, look, these look very similar. I wonder if they're the same thing. Uh, so uh, that was just something that hadn't entered in my mind. Now, uh, it was kind of, it, it was very funny to the person that I was with who, uh, when I learned that, because she had grown up in a farm and knew, knew where pickles came from. But um, if you can imagine me before I knew where pickles came from, if you were going to give me instructions or teach me how to make pickles, you would have to explicitly include to start with cucumbers. Uh, uh, if you just said, oh, you take the thing and you put it in here and you let it sit in that jar for a while. And then two weeks later, or I didn't, I still don't know how to make pickles. Uh, you say, ah, that's how you make pickles. And you know, the, the thing is, is that that sounds dumb, but my next point is this, you know, a, a person's worth is not depend on their understanding of technology or how to do something. Uh, did me not knowing how to make pickles or where pickles came from have anything to do with my worth as a human being? No, not at all. Uh, I remember a time I was uh, doing some training with someone on their site. Uh, I was with them and uh, I could tell that it had been going on for a while and I could tell that their eyes were starting to get a little bit glazed or their body language, like they probably couldn't take in much more. So I was about to wrap things up and I said, all right, now, so the next, the thing that you want to do next is take that file and FTP it to the server. And they kind of sat there and nodded a bit. And I looked at them and I, I said, do you know what FTP is? And uh, have you had that nightmare where you're supposed to play piano on the stage and everyone's sitting there, you walk out and sit down and then you realize, oh, I don't know how to play the piano. And you, and you think to yourself, uh, maybe I'll just start and maybe it'll come with me, uh, uh, come to me. Well, that person, she was sitting there and I could tell that she was hoping it would come to her and it wasn't. And so finally, there was no way out because I had asked her. She just sh put her head down and said, no, I, I don't know what that is. And I said to her, that's okay. Your, your worth as a human being does not depend on whether you know how to FTP or a file or not. And then I simply explained to her the concept of FTP and what it was and uh, moved on there. So remember, you know, we all have a universal struggle as humans, or 99.9% .9 of us. 
And that is to say, I don't understand what that means because in a learning situation, uh, the learner is vulnerable to their reasons and desires to succeed. And if they have, it's just in our human nature to say, I don't know what that is with when you're in the presence of someone who does eventually it's like, Oh, I don't, I don't want to appear weak. And, uh, and uh, they kind of get stuck. And that's why in a teaching situation, when a teacher abuses a student, it's a much greater violation than if a stranger does. I mean, both are horrible, but the abuse of that relationship or the taking advantage of the weakness of a student who's in that learning environment is something that we need to be aware of. And so when we're, helping others, we need to be watching out to make sure that uh, they're not getting lost and definitely dealing with them as a human being whose value is not determined by what they know or don't know. And so with that in mind, uh, keep in mind that we're trying to help people. And the key word there is people. Everybody is at a different place along the scale of whatever they're trying to do, whether it's Joomla or car restoration or playing Pokemon, uh, and everybody has stuff going on in their lives. And uh, some people trying to learn Joomla are suffering uh, perhaps from uh, mental illness. Some people may have chronic pain. Others maybe are struggling with addiction. They may have disadvantages due to uh, where they live in the world or a lack of educational opportunity. There's All of us have a story that's going on. And, uh, and that's important to remember when we're trying to help people, because instead of getting so caught up on, oh, am I going to, am I going to look, am I doing a good job teaching? Are they getting it? Uh, who are they? What's their problem or what's going on? We can actually just deal with them as people. And one of the things that I try to do when I'm helping people that I've never met before, maybe it's in a forum or if, you know, I have a Zoom call with them or something, I try to imagine some scenario in their life so that I can treat them humanely, not just based on some arbitrary value because of what they know or they don't know. So if it's someone, I find out what country they're in and, uh, and maybe it's a poorer country in the world, I think, okay, here's someone who's trying, uh, here's trying someone who's trying to better themselves and maybe they've got some obstacles, but this could really make a difference in their life. Suddenly I see them as a person and then I can relate to them as a person instead of like, oh, what does this person know? I don't, I don't, why don't they know that? Oh, this is, oh, what's going on? Then you, you just enter, uh, then you're in that interaction and helping people. Now, that's just with new people. You can't make up things with people that you know. I mean, you should take some time to get to know them. But, um, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, we treat people that we're trying to help our are, are people. And as long as it's important for us as teachers or helpers or moderators or developers or whatever to realize that we're interacting with people and to treat them that way. Um, another thing is, is that some people don't really realize the help that they need. And so I think that we can really make a difference in people's Joomla experience by not only uh, not, not by not just helping them with what they need to do, but maybe taking the opportunity to give them a little bit more to give them a, a direction in their life. Now, back around the time that uh, Joomla forked off of Mambo, uh, there's a day I was at a meeting of pastors and uh, of local pastors, and uh, I talked about web pages that I was doing there too with uh, for my church and. After the meeting, uh, a, a friend that I knew came out and he says, "Hey, he says, do you have a second for me to show you something?" And I said, yeah, sure. So there at his, uh, at his the side of his van, he opened up his laptop and he says, and he showed me the web page he was working on in Microsoft front page. And he said, he says, this banner, I keep trying to center it, but it, it keeps moving off to the side. How can I get it centered? Now I could have told him how to center it. Although I had that same problem with Microsoft front page as well often, but actually what I said to him was this, I said, well, I've got something to show you that you are really, really going to enjoy. And I got him going in Joomla. And that actually turned out to be a really great friendship around uh, computer stuff. We would uh, get together on Saturday night, work on each other's church bulletins and work on sites together. And uh, that was really great. So he he needed some help, but there were some things that he didn't know. And, uh, and I was able to help with that. Uh, that's another thing that's important for us to keep in mind when uh, not only when we're helping others, but when we're being helped 
is that uh, although we can't know what we don't know, it's very important to be aware of the fact that there's probably some things that we don't know that would really be helpful for us. So when I do a video tutorial on something to do with regular labs, this always happens to me because the Peter Van Weston, everything I try to do fancy with regular labs extensions to show other people, uh, and very uh, oftentimes Peter will say, oh yeah, but why would you do it that way? Let me show you this way. And it's like, oh yes, of course. So I've gotten to the point where sometimes before I do the video, I say, Peter, this is what I'm gonna do a video on. Is there another way that I should be doing this? Uh, so keep in mind that the people that you're helping uh, might not realize the help that they really need and you can guide them and steer them in a direction. Uh, now this is advice that I have for people that, uh, well, it works for all of us that are building websites for others or anyone that's using a website that we've built or if you're a Joomla extension developer and that is watch a dumb guy follow your instructions, which includes your site design and be ready to make adjustments. Now, when I say a dumb guy, I'm talking about myself, all right? So self-deprecating humor. I'm, I, you know, I've just said, let's, be, let's treat people as people. But uh, it's, really, uh, it's really helpful uh, for people to see how you're using their stuff because, uh, and, and if they're in tune and want to really, uh, and they're open to making changes or they're open to providing the best experience for others, uh, it'll be beneficial for them. So yesterday, uh, Chait Madan of Joom Dev, so his uh, co-host the Joom Cast podcast with him, he said, "Hey, would you check out uh, JD Simple Contact Form? It's a new module they have, and 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 review it." And I said, "Okay, well, I yeah, I'll give it a try." I said, "Here, I shared my screen with him. I said, I want you to watch me try to find this on your site, uh, because I knew that uh, uh, if there was something I found out along the way." I'd have to write it down and contact and keep track of it. So it's like, hey, watch me figure this out. And it went very smoothly, but there were there was one point where he says, oh, it'd be really good to have a filter up at that section to filter through things. I said, yes, that would be great. And so that would be really, that was would be helpful for me in that situation, but it would also be helpful for others the next time they go. And uh, that's just something that, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, have a bromance with Chayton and 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 his extensions and everything there. Uh, they've got great things, but they don't always have every idea. And by watching someone else use it, it can uh, really help others uh, find their way along in Juma. So this is something that I do with my clients. Um, they'll call me and they'll say, I mean, we've had that experience, someone using a website that we've built or that we have, and they say, yeah, I'm I'm in the screen where it's asking for such and such, and I don't know what to do next, and it won't let me. And it's like, oh no, I don't even know where they are. So I get on a video call with them, Skype or Zoom, and that's pretty much what we're doing these days, anyways. And instead of uh, instead of trying to tell them what to do, I just sit back and I say, okay, show me what you're trying to do, or show me what you're doing. And sometimes it's like, oh, I never dreamt that they would use the site that way. Or who would have thought they would look for that page in that menu instead of the other one? And I think, okay. And instead of saying, oh, no, 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 don't, no, use that menu. Come on, use your head. I usually say something like, oh, you know what? All right, I'm going to add another menu in that spot so it's easier for you to find. Or even even watching people try to log in and it's like, oh, no, no. Uh, oh, here, I'll put a link for administrator for you down in the bottom that you can always use. So it's really helpful to watch other people to uh, use your use your stuff and uh, and learning how others are using your stuff will help a lot of other people in their experience with you. Now, uh, so let's get back to the my third uh, thing, and this is what I conclude with: uh, why help people? And I think the biggest reason for helping people is the heart connection of helping. Now, when I, I volunteered and suggested this as a topic, there was a number of categories that it would put in my you know, what would my topic fit under? And so I picked community because that's what made sense in helping others. Uh, you know, the, the dynamic of what happens in community is more than it's fun to be with people that uh, have the same, uh, same interests or, or activities as us. Uh, because uh, I believe that we're created with the need to have heart connections with other human beings. And those heart connections are what we call community. It's there in every human being. Even terrorists 
have community amongst themselves. Now it may take grotesque forms, but still they're, they're trying to have connections with, uh, with each other. And uh, that's what we have in Juma. And uh, what so many people say is their favorite thing about Juma is the community. And, and acknowledging that is key to effectively helping others. And it's also key to not accidentally hurting them or ourselves when we're trying to help others. Because when you help someone, you're really offering a part of yourself to that person. You're looking, uh, you know, uh, it, when you're when you're offering help, you're looking to have part of yourself to be accepted, and subconsciously, your very self to be accepted itself. So it's not like, oh, I've got some help here; it is. Uh, but you're also, it's like, hey, here's something I have that I can give to you. It will help you, and and we think if it helps them, oh man, they'll be appreciative, and we'll have a real connection. And I really, and and, and we enjoy that. Uh, if it's received, it's very rewarding. And if it isn't received, it can really stir up some strong emotions. And I think that's behind sometimes some of the dynamics that happen in community, all communities, not just the uh, Juma community, but in community that, uh, you know, not understanding that trying to help someone is actually giving of yourself and you're hoping that it will be received. And I think that's why we see sometimes outbursts from people who are trying to help others and it doesn't work out the way that subconsciously they were hoping for or maybe even consciously so uh lashing out when help is uh not followed even though it might have been your fault for not being clear so you give some directions that aren't clear they make a mistake and it's like oh no that's oh, why are you being so stupid it's really coming from inside like oh here i'm trying to help you and and, and you're not giving me back what i want out of this um or uh, sometimes people offer help in a very abrasive way, which is a great way to project uh, to protect yourself against feelings of rejection if they don't accept your help because they never listened to it in the first place. And then people instead of like, oh, well, I tried to help them, but they just they just didn't listen. They're they're so stupid, and so you know you avoid hurt by even trying to avoid that connection. You know because you if you never offer yourself, you can never be rejected. And our hearts understand that. And it can seep through in the ways that we help other people uh, where, because, because really helping others is to put yourself out there in a vulnerable position. They're vulnerable because they need help. Again, as we talked about earlier, why sometimes people like don't admit what they don't know or, or they just nod yes and yes. But the person asking for help or needs help is vulnerable. But when we're giving help, we're vulnerable as well. Uh, you know, our hearts are tricky things. If we can't get acceptance from where it should come from, it starts to, uh, our hearts start to change the priorities so we can fake some kind of acceptance from something else. And, and uh, if it's what we know or what we can do or uh, our abilities in doing Joomla or programming or designing or making a fast site or whatever, uh, a broken heart can easily see people as op who need help as opportunities to prop itself up. Instead of going to try to help someone in a positive way because they're people and we need that connection and hopefully it will work out, we start looking at people as things or opportunities that we can get good feelings out of or, or, or feel good about ourselves. And then in that place, we're not even interacting. So a, a real an example of this, and I've kind of made it generic. Uh, I've seen it a couple of times, similar to this. But on the Facebook, in the Joomla Facebook group, um, so uh, that's that's an entry point for a lot of people into Joomla. Uh, most likely, if they have uh, uh, most of the people in there that are new uh, are popping in there because they need help with some site they've it's been dumped on them by an employer or they finally reached the point where they need some help and they're just geared for social media. So someone will come in who's new, they've never posted before, and they ask the question, is there an extension that would be good to do X, Y, Z? And someone then comments, why don't you make one yourself? <laughs> so I, I see this stuff and I think, oh, okay. You know, you know, nobody who can make extensions themselves to do something unique is going on the Facebook group uh, to ask if there's any extensions to do it. So why a comment like that? Well, I think it's a tricky way for a heart, someone's heart to let everyone know that they know how to make extensions. 
and to feel good about themselves. And, you know, again, when we talk about being kind to other people, we need to be kind to people that um, people that are struggling and who are also not necessarily in a good place. So in that case, we imagine, okay, why is this person, why is this person responding this way, letting us know that they can do extensions? Oh, maybe they're struggling in their business. Maybe they're, maybe in their life, their boss is dumping on them. They just want someone to know that they can actually do something good. That allows us to have a good uh, reaction. Um, but, you know, it just goes back to the point. If we don't have a proper ground for our own sense of worth as a human being, then we're going to seek it out in broken ways. And when we're doing that, that does not help people who are looking for help. Uh, sometimes, and I, I sometimes uh, we're just not in the place to help others. Sometimes I'll see a forum post or someone on Facebook and they ask a question and I think, oh, I could help with that. But it's like, oh, you know what? I've had a rough day. I'm a little bit grumpy. I'm just going to pass on this one. Uh, helping people is a lot like swimming and water. Every time you walk past water, you don't always jump in and swim. And in the forums, there's going to be people that times that you can help and other times where it's probably best not to. So it's it's really important for us to watch out for our own tricky hearts. Um, and you because and this has application really to more than just helping people with Juma has application to life. And it's really this global pandemic that we're in has uh, has taken away quite a few pleasures, freedoms, opportunities, and even the basics that our hearts have tricked us into thinking are, need to be in our life or else we're not valuable or we're not important. And uh, and and because those, those things being taken away have really helped uh have really revealed a lot of shaky things that we build our lives on i mean if a virus from a faraway land although if you're watching this in china it's not a faraway land but if a virus way far away can take it away from your life just like that or in a matter of weeks is it really worth something building your human value on uh and so and 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 people being tricked by their hearts thinking that that their existence, their importance is based on things or knowledge or ability uh, in light of what's happening with the pandemic, it's making people act very strangely, some people, and very dangerously in many cases. But to wrap this up in respect to my topic today, uh, those are just some observations and philosophies and principles of how I try to help others who need help with Joomla. And uh, the foundation for them is trying to have, and I don't always succeed in this. Uh, I, I, I've failed lots of plenty of times myself, but the foundation is uh, proper self-awareness of what's going on inside of us and where our true value comes from. And so uh, as we help people in these ways and other ways, and, and many of you out there, I'm sure are already doing that and even more, uh, our community is gonna grow in number and in health as we help each other. So. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity to thank everybody out there who's watching this. Thank you for being part of this community and for being part of my life because I really, really enjoy Juma. I really enjoy everything I've learned over the years, the connections I've made, the people. I, I also too, uh, I also too enjoy those connections when I'm being helped or when I'm helping and just everything else that we have in this community. So thank you very much. Uh, also, thank you to the Joomla and Beyond team for uh, rolling with the punches and putting on this great virtual conference. That has, that, uh, listen, I know what it takes to uh, do live streaming and line. Uh, uh, sometimes it's a struggle to line one person up. So to do this for 24 hours straight. Uh, and I'll just say, uh, anybody who wants to contact me and continue with this discussion or anything else, at Basic Joomla on Twitter or Tim at Cybersalt.com, C-Y-B-E-R-S-A-L-T, Cybersalt. Dot com. I would love to hear from you. And of course, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel. But uh, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Tim, so far. Uh, that uh, was very insightful, especially for just very personally speaking. I, I started my Joomla career in the, uh, at that time, biggest Joomla support forum in, in Germany. And um, for me, that, that was just helping out other people was the way how I gained knowledge. So that, totally. that, 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 that was the starting point for me. And um, I'm still to, to the present day uh, supporting in the forum, um, not that often anymore, but I'm still around. And the 
the the key thing that you just said for me was that um showing proper behavior in in help situations requires self-awareness mm -hmm. so what what can we do with people who lack that self-awareness but still want to help because in, in in my observation those people are causing more more harm than they actually help they are driving away people from the from the community the the former uh, osm president also a german guy alex Metzler, in his in one of his keynotes uh, he said that his very first personal response that he got from one from a general community member was uh, rtfm um, because he was asking for help in a forum and all he got was rtfm so wh what can we do what's the solution for this well i i know that one thing that's important is to not become part of the problem when you're presented with someone that uh, that it's a uh, is having an issue or whatever they like i said who knows what they're what they're going through um it might be a bad day it might be a bad year it, it might be something even even bigger than that so and at the core i think at the core of that is unconditional love and acceptance i'm not saying to accept the behavior and I'm not saying, oh, that's just the way they are. They're always mean and we can't do anything. We'll just let people be people. But your first reaction to them is to not is to not uh, not become part of the problem by a quick interaction, but looking for a way that they can uh, that they can win out of this. And part of that is that self-awareness. Uh, so I got an email this morning uh, while I was uh, early this morning, I was finishing preparing for this. And it's like it really got my blood going. And I thought, oh, I just going to reply and and uh, and then I thought, oh, and you know what? I need to calm down and I need to come up with a response that's going to be helpful for that person as well. And now, one of the tricks of unconditional acceptance and love for people is understanding what it is, because uh, in one sense we say, oh yeah, we want to love, uh, we want to love people unconditionally. Everybody is worthy of love. Um, uh, another way is uh, to view it is from the perspective that there is nobody who is unworthy of love. And that short sort of shows the other side of the coin. So, cause you think, oh, everyone's everyone's uh, worthy of love or help or to, to be left in better place. But then in the, in the middle of a, a bad experience, it's like, oh my goodness, uh, I don't know about that. I just, you know, it starts to get to us. For us to be able to say, okay, a principle of life that I'm gonna follow is that nobody is unworthy of my help or nobody is unworthy of of trying to help them in the best way uh help them in a situation then that's a good perspective the other thing too is that sometimes you just can't you, you can't change people in that situation you can't change them anyways the only person you can change is yourself and that may change the dynamic of especially if it's something uh, going on for a long time but otherwise maybe some people for whatever reason you're not going to be able to help. And then in that case, uh, there's people closer who need to come around that person and try to help them. And if even if that doesn't work, then uh, then it really falls on leadership to take some steps to protect the community. Because um, so, uh, you know, if if you're if you're if your body is healthy, you're going to be able to withstand uh, some sickness certain sicknesses but if you're not healthy you make yourself vulnerable to uh even smaller things so part uh and this is the real challenge of leading a community and i you know like i did it for as a pastor i did it for 28 years in, in local churches is caring for the individual but also caring for the whole community as well and and those things exist in a in a tension and sometimes it's, you have to say to the community look okay here's the Here's what we're here's what we're going to do in this case because we're trying to help this person. Here's our long term goal, but then other times, if it becomes if it's just tearing the community apart and the whole over and all the people in it and and working together, then you have to go to the individual and say, okay, you know what, this this has to stop and this is the way that it's this is going to be, uh, and that that's as as we know that's super hard. Um, I always. When I was presented with a situation that was that reached the point of having to decide whether it was caring for the individual or caring for the community, I thought if I'm going to make a mistake either way, 
and this is like well down the road of trying to sort sort things out. If I'm going to make a mistake either way, I'm going to err on the side of caring for the community because an unhealthy community will just spawn off more things. You lose your best people. You'll, there'll be people who go like, I don't need this. I'm going to go over here where they, I get protected better in the community. Uh, you will also, if, if you let it go on, you'll also attract people who say, hey, look, I can join this community and I can get away with whatever behavior I want. Uh, so you kind of, you can almost attract that. Uh, but, but the first, the, the key thing is the first thing is make sure, you know, be self-aware of where you're at on things. Uh, don't, uh, if, if it's, uh, if it's a situation or something that's, that's not free to deal with, then don't, don't become part of the problem. But also if it's a situation that maybe you don't feel capable of dealing with, that's, that's, that's okay to do. But, uh, you know, you, you, you maybe find someone else who can help with it. But the key thing is, is um, not, not to become part of the problem, but eventually everything has to be seen through to an end eventually, or else then it's, then it's damaging. Thank you. Yeah. Lots of chat happening on here. I may have to, well, let's see what time. Are, oh, 1042. <laughs> hey, listen. I'm used. I'm loose, used to catching up on the chat. Can I go down here and see what was happening here? Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's see here. Um, uh, where were we up here? Da, 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 da. Wow, lots of lots of chat here. Bella, hey, hey, Mark and Adam, Dorothy loves Vancouver Island. Great kayaking. Yes, I don't kayak. I I don't even know how they make kayaks, but I know that I know where they come from. They come from the store. So, uh, do. 3D. Uh, my mask does not match as well. I have my mask right here, which a friend made. I think uh -oh, I think he was asking. Maybe he's asking someone else. I've got my mask here, so there you go. I'm not uh, apparently if I if I do this, I'm not able to uh, run to be president because I actually wore a mask. But uh, <laughs> uh, Daniel says sharing is caring. That's right. Hey, yeah. Manu, good to see you. Bretzi's there. Um, uh, Ian, someone once told me that at some point you can only learn more by teaching others. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah sure. and that that's a good point because eventually, if, if you're teaching someone and someone and you think, oh, this person has nothing to teach me, you're going to miss out on some real gem. And there's probably something that you've overlooked because everybody has a, a piece, of the, piece of the puzzle. Uh, Yes, and the teacher can learn by finding the answers to questions that are asked by students. Yeah, a part you know, students who say, you know, the courage have the courage to say, "Oh, I don't know what that means." Um, as as teachers or helpers, we can have that same courage and say, "Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to do that." In fact, uh, who hasn't fixed something and it's done working and is like, "I don't even know what, how'd you fix that." I have no idea. I'm just happy that it's working uh da, da, da. knowledge isn't better than the person who learned it that's true uh, uh man who knowledge is the only thing that will increase what you give share to someone else yes uh, uh and like kindness kindness you don't it doesn't uh it, it multiplies uh and love yep uh we've got a yep it's in there what's that's the best advice you never know how people really react to something unless you let them do it mm -hmm. yeah yeah, letting uh, letting people look through sites and watching how they do things. Um, uh, people won't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That's a that's great, Adam. That's 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 really true. And um, you know, listen, we uh, you know, we see people in 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 life who uh, will opt for something that's not the best, but it is uh, where the people are that they have the connection. And, uh, you know, people are, are, are looking for that. And we know that so, so much now in these times that we're living in, uh, we just really want those good connections. Uh, on the mark design, sharing knowledge is the most fundamental act of friendship because it's the way you can give something without losing something. Richard Stallman, oh, that's a great quote. Yeah. Brett sees seconding things. Uh, Ian there, he's seen things happen. We've all seen things happen. Yeah, self-centered little kind of thing. I think that was probably the comment about someone saying, well, just program your own extension. And and you're right, and probably not deliberately malicious. Just again, someone where where they're at in life, just trying to get along. And so that's part of community is uh, is accepting each other and, and moving along. 
um, Adam and uh, them uh, interacting there. Uh, thanks, Sven, for that for the kind words, and Ian and Allison, my fellow Canadian. She's uh, uh she's about 3500 3, kilometers away from me, but uh, in the same province that I grew up in. And the, in, uh, the messages after Duke that's uh, related to the question I asked. And uh, oh, okay, good. All right, all right. I hear you. Skip down. Skip down. Good. Okay. Uh, if I if I miss something you want to talk, like I said, hit me up. That would be great. All right. Awesome. So thank you, Tim, for the insights, uh, for your thoughts. Uh, thanks for uh, for taking the time, sharing your knowledge. Uh, oh, thank you, everybody, for your experience. Your comments. Well. Um, yeah. uh, it's uh, 10 and 10 a.m. in the morning for you, so I, I'm not saying have a have a nice evening, but uh, no, it's yes, quarter to 11 in the morning. <laughs> and um, now I, I'm I'm not wrapping it up here. We, we keep talking if you want. But I will just say this because I always end all my tutorials this way. Until the next time, enjoy your Joomla sites and God bless. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Thank you, Tim. You got my opening and closing in there. <laughs> great job. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for that comment there, Gary and Gavin. All right, you guys. Have a great rest of the day. And I would go and keep smiling until I'm not live anymore. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm, I'm doing tattoo. <laughs> Video guys, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs>